Hello, welcome to lesson 12. In this lesson, we are going to have the introduction to optical instruments, and then we shall look at a simple microscope. Let us begin by looking at this introduction to optical instruments. Uh, an optical instrument, or let me say optical instruments, these are instruments that work on the principle of reflection and refraction of light rays. And they include microscopes, telescopes, cameras, projection lanterns, and uh, prism binoculars. Let us define the term visual angle. Visual angle, this is the angle subtended to the eye by the object. Let us consider, for example, an object at a certain distance to the eye, subtending an angle theta to the unaided eye, and subtending that small angle theta to the unaided eye. When you observe this, this angle theta is going to be equal to this, because they are vertically opposite. So if this is also going to be theta. And uh, if we consider that the height of this image is h, then since this alt theta is a small angle in radians, so theta is approximately equal to tan of theta, which is opposite the h of adjacent, which is a. And therefore, h is going to be a times theta. And uh, this implies that h is proportional to theta. And so we can say that uh, we can say that the height uh, the height of the image formed by the height of the image formed by the retina is proportional to the angle subtended at the eye. It's proportional to the angle subtended at the eye by the object. Angle, so proportional to the angle subtended at the eye by the object. That is to say, the greater the visual angle, the greater the size of the object. So if you have a bigger a bigger visual angle, it implies the, the apparent size of that object will appear to be bigger. Let's have this more. That is the apparent size of collinear objects. So we are going to see this. We are going to consider four vertical poles of the same height placed at different positions from an observer O. So we have different poles of the same height placed at different positions. Uh, from an observer O. So when you look at these four poles, pole 1, pole 2, pole 3, and pole 4, this pole 4, which is farthest, subsends an angle theta, and this one subsends an angle alpha, the next one subsends an angle beta, the next one subsends an angle gamma. And we have observed that the poles that are nearer to the observer subtend bigger angles or larger angles compared to the poles that are farthest away. For example, that pole 4 subtends a smaller angle theta at the observer's eye. Now, because of what we looked at, that h is proportional to theta, it means that the bigger the angle, the bigger or the larger the size of, or the, the larger the size of that, the larger the size of the image. So it means that for this pole, one which is subtending a bigger angle is going to appear to be taller than these other poles, two, three, and four, which are subtending a, a smaller angle. So you, these poles that are far away will appear to be shorter than these poles that are nearer. But that is just the way they appear to be. But we know that in a real sense, they are of the same size. They are of the same size, but they just appear to be shorter than those which are nearer to the observer. However, if objects C, P, and Q subtend the same angle at the observer's eye, the object appears to be, the object appears to be, of the same size 
although the farthest object P is physically bigger than that at Q. Let us see this. We are saying that if in case they are the subtending the same angle, for example, if you have this pole P and this object P and Q, they are subtending the same angle theta. They are subtending the same angle theta. So they will appear to be of the same height, and yet in actual sense they have the different height. But because they are, they are uh, but because they are subtending the same angle theta, they are going to be appearing to be of the same height, though they are physically having different sizes. They are physically having different sizes. Let's look at angular magnification or a magnifying power of an optical instrument. So this is the ratio, we are defining angular magnification or magnifying power. Uh, this is the ratio of the angle subtended at the eye by the final image, that is the final image formed, when using the instrument, or when using an optical instrument, to the angle subtended at the unaided eye by the object. Now, when you talk of unaided eye, let's know that this unaided eye is when the object is viewed without using an instrument. That's what you call unaided eye, when you are viewing the object without using an instrument. Let's look at microscopes. A microscope is an instrument used for viewing near objects. is an instrument used for viewing near objects. And in normal adjustment, or in normal use, the image formed by the microscope is usually at a least distance of distinct, of distinct vision, or of distinct, uh, that is of distinct vision D, when it is in normal adjustment, the it is always going to be at the image is going to be at a distance of the least distance of distinct vision D, which you usually call D, abbreviated as capital D from the eye. Let's look at angular magnification of a microscope. If a microscope, this is the ratio of the angle subtended at the eye angle subtended at the eye by the image at a near point when the microscope is used to the angle subtended at the unaided eye by the object at a near point. That is the angular magnification of a microscope. Now, we have different types of microscope. We have simple microscope and compound microscope. So in this lesson, we are going to concentrate in simple microscope. So let us look at simple microscope, which we at times call the magnifying glass in normal use or in normal adjustment. So when it is normal adjustment, uh, then it means that in usually normal use, the magnifying glass is going to form a virtual magnified image. While in the, when it is not in normal use, it's going to be forming an image at infinity. Now, before using this instrument or this microscope here, uh, we first of all view an object at a near point. We shall first of all view an object at a near point using an aided eye. So if you view an object at a near point, that when talk of a near point, that is a distance of this, this distance d, which you call the least distance of distinct vision d, that, that is a near point. So this object of, h, of height h is going to be subtending an angle beta to the naked eye or the unaided eye. So if this is a small angle beta, this beta is a small angle in radians, measured in radians, so it implies that beta is approximately equal to tan beta, which is opposite over adjacent. 
and the opposite is H, the adjacent is D. So beta is going to be given by H over D. Now after that, then we shall view this object. So we have got this bit as this. Now we are going to view this object uh, using a simple microscope in normal adjustment. So a simple microscope in normal adjustment consists of uh, a lens, a converging lens, set in such a way that it forms a virtual magnified direct image of an object placed between the principal focus and the optical center of the lens at the least distance of distinct vision. So we saw this uh, when we are looking at images formed by lenses. So when we want to get a virtual magnified image, we shall place our object between F and the optical and the, this uh, between F, that is the principal focus, and the optical center of the lens. And when we place that object here, we shall get a magnified image of height h, let's call this h1, of height h1, of height h1. So this is our diagram. So the angle subtended by the image, the final image of height h1, uh, is alpha, is alpha. So the angle subtended at the eye when using an optical instrument, that angle is going to be alpha. So it implies that alpha, since this is a small angle in radians, alpha is going to be approximately equal to tan of alpha, which is going to be opposite H or adjacent, sorry, H1 or adjacent D. So alpha is going to be H1 over D, where D is that image distance. So we now have alpha and have beta. So we can get our magnifying power or the angular magnification. So angular magnification is going to be the ratio subtended by the final image onto the eye when using an optical instrument, that is alpha, to the, uh, uh, to the angle subtended, we are looking at that ratio, to the angle subtended by the object and to the unaided eye, that is beta. So we shall have alpha divided by beta as the angular magnification. But we know alpha is this, and beta we got it as h over d, so we shall have our m as h1 over h. And when you look at this, h1 over h is actually linear magnification. h1 over h is linear magnification. Height of, the ratio of the height of image to the height of object is the linear magnification. And that linear magnification, we, we, use, we represent it using small m. And so we shall see that is, the capital M is equal to the small m. The angular magnification is equal to the linear magnification. But we know that m is equal to v over f minus 1. We showed this, where actually v is the image distance, which is d. And uh, since it is uh, a virtual image, then it's going to be negative d. And we, when we substitute here, it implies that the angular magnification is going to be negative d over f minus 1. Where f is the focal length of the lens. Let's look at some examples. Uh, we're going to look at this example here. Calculate the angular magnification produced by a magnifying glass of focal length 5 centimeters adjusted such that the, an image such that an image is formed at a distance of 25 centimeters in front of it so usually this distance 25 centimeters is the d the d is usually 25 centimeters and the f is uh, so this is the image distance d which is uh, 25 centimeters and then the final image is uh, sorry the focal length is 5 centimeters so using the formula m is equal to negative d over f minus 1 remember and when we substitute d is 25, so we shall have negative 25 over f. f is uh, 5 centimeters. So since this is a converging lens, it's going to be positive, positive f. So we shall have 
our m as negative 6. Remember, this is a virtual image. So in, in simple terms, the magnification, the angular magnification is going to be 6. Let us continue and look at simple microscope with final image at infinity. So when the final image is at infinity, we shall have uh, still the same way. The object of right H is going to be viewed and it's going to subtend an angle of beta at the unaided eye. And so this, since this angle of beta is very small, in radians, the price that beta is going to be approximately equal to tan beta, which is equal to H over D. Now let's consider now when using optical instrument. So we are going to here now consider uh, this simple microscope that is a converging lens and then the object being placed at F in order for us for the final image to be at infinity the object will be placed at the principal focus so it will be like this the object will be placed at the principal focus and the image is going to be formed at infinity and that image is going to be subtending an angle alpha at the eye when using DC optical instrument which is the converging lens so alpha is going to be opposite over adjacent so if this is going to be h over f the height of this object is h the height of the object is h so it's going to, it's going to h over f is going to be the alpha and our beta is h over d so when we substitute magnification angular magnification is alpha divided by beta angular magnification is alpha divided by beta that is the alpha is the angle subtended by the final image onto the eye when using an instrument and beta is the angle subtended by the object uh, onto the naked eye so when we substitute we shall get our m as a d over f so the angular magnification for a simple microscope with final image as infinity is going to be d over f where f is the focal length of the lens d is the least distance of distinct vision which is usually 25. let's last look at the dispersion in a magnifying glass so when you consider this magnifying glass uh, remember the image formed is usually virtual magnified so when you place an object here, the image, now a ray parallel to the principal axis is refracted through the principal focus and the ray passing through the optical center goes undeviated. Now at this point, there is going to be refraction. But because if you consider, for example, an object, uh, white light usually undergoes dispersion. So because of that, we are going to have different rays due to the different component colors that comes from the white light. So this ray is going to undergo dispersion at this lens. And when they, it is dispersed, they are going to be forming. The, the, different, the different colors are going to be refracted at different angles, and then they are going to be uh, f having focus at different points. And because of that, it will result into different images, virtual images. For example, here we are seeing the red light, the red colored image, and then we are seeing the violet colored image. But of course, there are other images, yellow, blue, and different. Uh, so they are going to be forming, virtual images are going to be formed here. However, we can see that these images, these different images, are subtending the same angle. They are subtending the same angle onto the eye. They are subtending the same angle. And because they are subtending the same angle, these different images are going to be superposed. They are going to be superposed. In other words, they will appear to be like, as one. They are different colors, but they are going to be appearing as one. They are going to be appearing, they are going to superpose and they appear as one. And because of that, the effect of chromatic aberration is going to be lessened. So it's... Uh, so this simple microscope is going to be almost free from chromatic aberration. 
it's going to be almost free from chromatic aberration. Uh, so let us make a note here that if in the case here this is we are observing this from magnifying glass. That is because the image formed is virtual magnified. But if the image formed was the real, then chromatic aberration will be observed. So it is only minimized for a magnifying glass. But if it is for a real image formed by the lens, as explained in the previous section of aberration, we shall see that chromatic aberration will be there. Chromatic aberration will be there. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. We meet in the next lesson.